our keynote presentation, given by a man that I can tell you I've competed against him in contests, and I hold him in the highest regard, not just because of his speaking ability, but because of the man that he is. By day, Scott Brown is organizational behavior specialist. He helps leaders learn how to align their organizations, actions, and intentions. As the owner of the Hardy Consulting Group, he has the great fortune to work with a diverse range of companies, industries, and executives, all struggling with the same basic problem. How to solve the people puzzle. By night, Scott is a youth baseball coach for both Rec Bowl and Bear Creek and for travel ball team, the Osceola Overdrive. By using baseball to teach kids about competition, dedication, resilience, and sportsmanship, Scott has found an avenue to give back to his community. In his spare time, Scott belongs to three Toastmasters clubs, the Articulators, Winter Park Toastmasters, and Ace, and is diligently working towards a master's degree in organizational leadership from Palm Beach Atlantic University. Whether he is functioning as a coach, a consultant, a student, or a Toastmaster, Scott routinely hears <coughs> stories of how people wish they knew then what they know now. So they could change some former decisions or action. As we celebrate the Christmas season, reflect on 2013, and launch ourselves into 2014, and as the facilitators induct their new executive committee, Scott is honored to have the opportunity to share a speech about purpose, planning, and priorities, and title. The fork in the road. Please put your hands together for Mr. Scott Brown. What a beautiful evening this is. Thank you so much for inviting me to come speak to you tonight. I feel December is one of the most magical times of year. It's that only time of the season, the only time of the year, where we don't get to just celebrate our religion, our traditions, but we're also forced to celebrate our family. <laughs> Sometimes we don't want to, but we do. We celebrate our past, our present, and our future. We look back to where we've been, and we make plans to where we're going to go next. December gives us that great opportunity for celebration, and to be able to look back on our lives and say, well, if I could do then what I did now, how much better would my life be? Let me ask you, how many of you know how you got here tonight? And I don't mean you drove your car I four. <laughs> how many of you know how you actually got here tonight? Do you know what decisions you have made that have led you to this point in your life? Do you know what decisions you failed to make which led you to this point in your life? Do you know when you look back on your life, do you know what those things are you're most proud of? Where you were aligned with your values? And what things you look back and said, what the heck was I thinking? <laughs> we all come to forks in a road. We all come to those places through our life where I can either go this way or this way, this way or this way. And those forks in a row, they don't always come with just an either or. They come with three or four possibilities. There are so many different kinds of forks in the road you're going to come to. Some of them are really small decisions that are forks in the road. Kind of like those little forks you use to eat Gershkin 
pickles during the holiday season, little hors d'oeuvre forks. They don't really matter that much. But you know that if you use enough of them over time, something's going to go wrong. You better make the right decisions with those little forks. And then you have those larger forks, the ones you use on a daily basis. The ones that dictate, what am I going to do today? What am I going to do tomorrow? What am I going to do in the next hour? Am I going to choose to have an extra piece of cake, or am I going to go run? Some of us have eaten a lot of cake. <laughs> not going to want to run. And then you have those huge forks, the serving forks. The ones that can heap a whole bunch of stuff on your plate, some of it you don't want, some of it you don't need. But those are the seminal moments in your life that you can say, this is where I diverged from my path or I chose my path. So think, when was the last time you sat down and figured out, where is it that I have spent the time to make those decisions proactively? We're not making them reactively. Well, December is one of those great times also where we get to see amazing movies and hear great stories that have poignant messages. Some of them don't really are intended for the kids' audience, but we show it to them anyway. How many of you saw Christmas Carol when you were a kid? How many of you were scared that you were going to get visited by three ghosts the next day? <laughs> Thank you, I'm not the only one. Very good. How many of you saw It's a Wonderful Life? How many of you were a little bit concerned that the only way you're going to figure out where you're going is if I get visited by ghosts or angels? <laughs> not the greatest message, but think about what those stories tell us. You have the story of Ebenezer Scrooge, the most miserable man in town, the one that spent his whole life focusing on money. Focusing on materialism and forgetting about family and friends, relationships, and a future. He gets visited by his former partner who comes to him and says, I want to spare you from my pain. Because I am now destined to walk the earth shackled in chains for everything I did when I was alive. And over the next three nights, he gets visited by three different ghosts. Past, present, and future Christmas. He gets the privilege to look at his life from the outside in. Think about that. If you could look at your life from the outside in, what would you see today? How would you see your life differently than what you see when you look from the inside out? Do you see the impact you have on people's lives? Do you see the effect of constant choices over the course of your life and where that's led you to today? To have the ability to look from the outside in, shouldn't you take a ghost or an angel? Just take some reflection. And we all have that ability. We don't need Clarence to come, try to earn his wings, and help us figure out where we're going to go with our life. To look at us and say, these are all the great things you've done. If it wasn't for you, this town would be nothing. But because you, George Bailey, you are the one that saved our town, you've given us something to be thankful for. So we all have that ability to look at our life in reflection. When you stand at the precipice of decisions, I have to make those big ones, what do you do? Three years ago, I walked into my office to go back from vacation one day, was pulled aside and said, you know, the economy is not so good. Why don't you pack up your office and good luck to you for the rest of your life? Wow. I realized at that point that I was at one of those forks in the road. What was I gonna do? So I did what any normal person would do. I went home and I asked my dogs what I should do. <laughs> I stood in my living room, talking to my dogs, trying to figure out what it is I want to do with my life. Because I knew they couldn't give me a bad answer. <laughs> and as I did that, something came to me. The decisions I had made, I never really paid attention to where I was trying to go. I was just trying to get ahead. 
But the problem with trying to get ahead is you go someplace you can't go back to. When you climb that corporate ladder, you need to look up to figure out where it's going. You need to figure out if you put the ladder against the right wall in the first place. I never figured that out. So what I did is I pulled out my flip charts as an HR guy. I have flip charts at home. I'm a little bit of a nerd. <laughs> pulled out my flip charts and, charts and started writing. What are the things that I value most? What are my values? What is my mission in life? What is my vision in life? Where am I trying to go? Took that off, pasted it up on the wall. Took another one. Where are all the forks in the road that led me to where I got to at that moment that I wish I could go back and change or that I'm proud of making? And I wrote a list. Worked that off, stuck that up on the wall. My wife came home and said, what are you doing? I said, I'm trying to figure out my life. She left. She came back eventually. She didn't leave, but she left to give me my space. I took post-it notes. I started writing all of the things all of those individual little forks that I had, that I had come to <coughs> and where I had made those decisions, I started trying to figure out where was I trying to go? What was I trying to do? And I realized that the corporate career that I had been going after was not at all what I wanted to do with my life. It was what was easy. It was the past of least resistance. How many of you have realized at some point in your life you're going down the path, the path of least resistance rather than the path you're supposed to go down. It's so easy to fall into that trap. The money is good. You're having fun. This can't end what? This can't end poorly, right? One thing leads to another, to another, to another. And then all of a sudden you realize you've lost yourself somewhere back here. So I realized what I was doing wasn't what I should be doing. And at that moment, I made some big decisions. I went back to grad school, because I wanted to do something different with my life. I started a company, because I didn't want to be the person that had to just help one company. I wanted to give back to others. And I went back into coaching and started coaching baseball. All of those things allowed me to be able to help other people. But to get to those places, I need some planning. Look at what SMART goals are. Anybody remember SMART goal? Specific, measurable, action-oriented, realistic, and time-bound. Every step that I had to take in order to start a company, in order to start coaching, and in order to get back on track, I wrote down as goals. Now, I didn't write them down as goals of I'm going to take this one step, but I wrote them down as goals. These are all the steps I'm going to take to get to where I'm trying to go. So why do I tell you this tonight? Facilitators are at the same precipice that I was at a few years ago. You guys spent 10 years in the hospice. Most people that spend 10 years in the hospice don't get out. <laughs> you went the opposite way. You went from hospice to a nursing home. Congratulations. <laughs> I didn't know that was possible. <laughs> but look back on what you guys have done in the past 10 years. You have two people sitting in this room that were founding charter members when you guys started. You have seven past presidents that are still members of this club. You have six DTMs, you have area governors, you have everything that a successful Toastmaster Club wants to be. But that's where you were. You were in hospice. With a change of venue, you have the chance to figure out where do we want to go as a club? Who's going to take us there? And as you get ready for an installation of officers, are the new officers the ones that are going to just take you there, or are they going to be the ones that help lead you there? <clears throat> Toastmasters is all about the community getting together to move forward. And you have the opportunity as a club now to redefine what you're going to be famous for. You're already famous for a lot of things. You're already famous for being that club that is able to produce Toast, that is able to produce DTMs, <clears throat> that is able to produce award-winning award -winning speakers. 
You're well known. You're well recognized. But where do you want to go from here? Do you want to keep going down the path of least, of least resistance? Or do you want to start with a plan of where you're going to go from this day forward so 10 years from now you look back on this day as not just another meeting, but this was the first day of the rest of our club. Within Toastmasters, we are given so many privileges. We are given the privilege of leadership, of communication, of listening, of, and of evaluation. If you look at all those things, all of those things relate to self-reflection. Individuals can self-reflect on where they've been, where they were, where they want to go. Clubs can do the same thing. What is your mission as a club for where you're going to go five years from now? What's your mission as a club to where you're going to go one year from now? What do you want to be famous for? As we go into 2014, we all have that opportunity that we're going to set those goals for next year. We always come up with the same ones, don't we? I'm going to lose some weight. I'm going to get organized. And maybe I'll try to be a better person. But except for the losing the weight... How do you measure any of those? More organized, what does that mean? That means you can find the list that you wrote last year that told you you want to be more organized next year. <laughs> As you go into this next year, think about not just where you've been and where you want to go. Set a plan. There's an old saying that people don't plan to fail. People fail to plan as you're going forward as a club, as individuals, write down your plan. Don't just write down your resolutions of what you're going to do. Write down how you're going to do that. Write down how you're going to help others. Write down how you're going to help yourself. And don't just write down the why. Write down the why. Why is this important? Why is it important for Jonathan to do the three things on his list that he's going to do next year? Why is it important for Gary to go out and take the specific actions that he's going to take over the next three months? Because without the why, there is no what. We can always do tasks, but a task that doesn't have purpose is meaningless. Remember years ago, I heard a quote from Yogi Berra. If you don't have a plan, you might just end up somewhere else. <laughs> and I know Yogi Berra is not the most famous speaker in the world, but he has a point. You have to have a plan. So I go back and ask you to, to re-look at those Christmas stories that you've heard over the past years. Look at a Christmas carol. Look at It's a Wonderful Life. And look at them in a different way. Don't look at them in terms of, boy, it's a really entertaining story. Boy, I don't really feel bad for George Bailey. And boy, it's nice to see a Scrooge and then become a decent person. Look at them in terms of how did those visits help those individuals look at their lives from the outside in instead of from the inside out? And then go back and figure out how you can look at your life from the outside in so that you can get a better grasp of what you've done, where you're going, what you want to do. And at the point when you have that plan, that's when you're going to move forward and you're going to be the most successful person that you can possibly be. I have complete faith that the facilitators, 10 years from now, are going to be sitting in this room with twice as many people looking back and saying, our future began to be forged when we moved out of death and into life. <laughs> I love that line. <laughs> Where you go from here is really up to you. But if you don't have a plan, you're not going to get there. So when you come to that next fork in the road, do three things. Look at how big the fork is. Is it good for a person with pickle? Or is it a serving fork? Stand in front of that pickle. Stand in front of that fork and say, do I have a way of being able to determine what it is I'm going to do proactively so that I go down the path that I'm supposed to go down instead of just the easiest path that I can pick? And then lastly, put your plan into action. Figure out where you're going. Do it. 
and don't look back. If you do those things, you'll be the most successful individuals and some of the most successful club you can possibly be. And in the, in the end, isn't that why we are all Toastmasters in the first place? To better ourselves and to better our communities? I look forward to 10 years from now to see where you guys go. I look forward to seeing where you've been as well. That's what's going